Hi, and welcome to this video on Chapter 4, Sections 4.4 4 through 4.9 for Statistics 220. I just wanted to start this video by showing you some resources that are here for Chapter 4 um, that you should be paying extra attention to. Of course, first the Chapter 4 notes um, that you would want to make sure you start with those notes. And if you will notice, these notes have... Um, extra notes, extra things added into them as you go through um, explanations on the slides uh, of, of different things. And so this week you are working on 4.4 4 through 4.9. And that starts with probability distributions for continuous random variables. Um, and it moves us toward the normal variable as far as this section is concerned. Um, so the other thing that I want to point your attention to is once that PowerPoint stops, we have some additional notes on discrete and continuous probability distributions um, to kind of show you the difference between what is a discrete and what is a continuous. And we also have additional notes for sections 4, 5 through 4, 9 with some additional um, problems worked out. We have some... Um, just some snippets from the textbook, some other additional problems worked as well, so you'll want to follow along through these as you look at these sections. And then, um, Table 3, Appendix A, you will need this table throughout the rest of Chapter 4. Um, you can print this one-page table here, or you can, under the Lecture Notes folder, print one file with all of the tables and you can carry all of those typos around with you um, as you go. And so you'll see that this is, um, those are the binomial tables, and then this gets us to this table three normal curve areas, which we will need for sections 4.4 um, to 4.9. So other things in chapter, uh, or unit two, chapter four, this is a sample problem of number two on the homework worked out. Um, by hand, and then there are notes about how you would do this on StatCrunch. So I've tried to provide both ways uh, of doing these problems by hand and by StatCrunch, simply because it's good to know what's going on behind the scenes, even if StatCrunch is doing this for you. Um, chapter 4, Homework 4, 4 to 4, 9, Extra Worked Problems. So this is just some extra samples. Uh, basically, this entire... Um, Chapter 4, sections 4, 4 to 4, 9. This is the entire assignment with some of these problems worked out. Um, and again, you'll see working things by hand, and you'll see stack crunch steps um, for for each of these problems where stack crunch will work um, work for you, and then some of them you you can do also uh, by hand. Um, so you as you scroll through that. You'll see, again, lots of things worked out. You will see stat crunch steps. Um, so again, this question in particular is referring you back to stat crunch with the binomial calculator. And so in these sections, you will be using um, the binomial calculator, the normal calculator, and um, so as we go as we go on again you'll see worked out by hand worked out with technology you will notice that sometimes by hand and sometimes uh, with technology the answers turn out to be just a little bit different and that has to do with your rounding error and the way the table produces the numbers versus the way the, that stack crunch produces the numbers but you should be able um, either answer, whether you do it by hand or with technology, StatCrunch is supposed to be programmed to take either answer, whether you're using the table by hand or whether you're using StatCrunch technology. Um, if you get to a point where any of it is not working, things are just not happening the way you think they should, uh, just contact me and let me know. So I do want to go into StatCrunch and draw your attention to um, the normal calculator and the binomial calculator again just so you are familiar with those calculators so stat calculators we used the binomial 
the last time. So we use the standard and in, in the between for sections 4, 1 through 4, 3. And this time also we will be using the normal calculator. And also notice with the normal calculator you have a standard and a between. Um, and so you enter your mean, you enter your standard deviation, you enter your less than equal, greater than equal, and whatever number, and this answer gives you your answer choice. Okay, and the same with the between. You enter the mean, the standard deviation, you enter the numbers, x is between, uh, whatever number it's between, and you get um, the percentage or the probability. So if you notice on this calculator, it is actually the standard normal distribution with mean at zero and standard deviations of one. And between positive one and negative one, that's one standard deviation above and below, it's giving us a 0.68, which is about 68%. And that is, according to the empirical rule, 68% um, of the values will be between one standard deviation above and below. Uh, if you remember that from the empirical rule in chapter 2.